Look at this. She is such a big girl. Ooh. Hello lovely beans and welcome to a new video. So maybe you've heard about this little fashion phenomenon that popped up last year called the strawberry dress by New York based designer Lirika Matoshi. It's poofy, it's floofy and it looks like a cloud of strawberry candy floss and seems to have just hit the right spot in our collective hearts somehow. Some other folks on the interwebs have already done their takes on this iconic dress. Notably Rachel Maxey and So Steen. I'll link their videos in the description box. I found this pattern on the Vintage Sewing Pattern Company's website and was intrigued enough to want to try it out. So now that I have my tea, a cookie, the pattern and some gorgeous strawberry printed cotton, let's go cut out the pieces. Okay guys, this was hard. So we have the back of the skirt, the front of the skirt. We have the back pocket facing, we have the back pocket, we have the front pocket facing and the front pocket. We have the back right, front right, back pocket facing, back pocket, front pocket facing, front pocket. Top front, top back, top strips, straps, top straps, and a waistband. Now, the back pockets, and back pocket facings and the top back and the straps all need darts so that's what I'm going to be doing now um, and because they're a little bit interesting I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and show you that too so uh, let's go okay so on the straps we've got this a little area here. I didn't actually transfer the dots um, but the idea is to squeeze these like a so and sew along the marked lines and thereby creating a kind of crook effectively in the uh, kind of crook in the strap so what you've basically got, basically got it comes up from here and then sort of underneath the fabric kind of bends upwards so that is what I'm going to do now with my very favorite uh, ladder stitch Okay, so I've got the front of the top here, and what this baby needs is uh, gathering stitches all along here down to this marker. And what I'm going to do for this, because it, I'm going to do two lines, is I'm going to uh, use my machine for that to try out something new. So, gathering stitches by machine, here we go. Okay, here we are. Now, got some neat gathering stitches along here. It's going to make it a lot easier to sort of gather this whole shazang evenly. I was going to do that on the other side.
After adding the gathering stitches to the other side as well, I'm just pinning the front and back of the top together right sides facing up to where the gathering starts. Then I pinned the top edge and the balance marks together as well and massaged the rest of the fabric down into the space between pinning as I went. As you can see I removed the pin at the balance mark to make things a bit easier and as you can also see there was a lot of zhuzhing. Once everything was zhuzhed into place I tossed it through the machine. I'm always mildly anxious when I sew anything gathered. I'm not sure why. And here's the one side finished. I'm just going to go and finish off the seam with a zigzag stitch. Now here I am on the other side seam and because this will have the zip added, I'm backstitching after the gathers and using a long basting stitch below that point so I can insert the zip later and have less of a fuss when taking out the basting stitches. Okie doke. So, some things have happened since we last spoke. Um, well, since last night, rather. Uh, so, I last showed you sewing up the and gather, sewing, gathering and sewing up the sides of the top and what I've been playing around with is the facing um, or finishing of the neckline rather because that is something that I um, neglected to uh, figure out when I was doing the mock-ups now what I've done is I've pinned all this together and have sort of pinned in the straps in two different ways. Um, this one's obviously sort of, this would be sewn on after the facing is finished. Now I'm... Uh, don't you see that? Sort of... This is obviously caught a little bit. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of this version. So what I think I'm going to do is pin in the strap and sew it all on together so I get like a nice sort of encased encased hugged surrounded sandwiched finish on the strap um, it's go going to be fun to do this on the on the back then subsequently because uh, I'm gonna have to yeah that's good that's gonna be fun but what I'm going to do now is unpin some of this and unpin some of this and put these in the correct position and then sew the hell out of it and I'm still not decided whether I'm going to go over with a row of top stitching or whether I'm just going to under stitch it well we'll see that when we get there so um, let's go So, yeah, that's uh, not bad, um, I've done worse, so I'm just gonna take this over to the ironing board and see how we go from there. Okay, so after a nice little press, this is what we've got. I kind of like the neat edge, but I think it's also a tiny bit boring. So what I'm going to do, I don't actually think I need to clip this because it's such a gentle curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pin this down and then top stitch it. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to save you the pinning and jump straight to the sewing.
And after that bit of professional procrastination, here I am adding the zip. What I'm trying here is a railroaded zip, I believe. So I basted the side seam, ironed the seam allowance open, and I'm now centering the zip over the seam edges, pinning it in place, and then very daintily sewing it down after having adjusted my needle. And things always turn really ugly when I get to the zipper boat. Not sure what it's what this movable part is called in English. Uh, there, ah, yeah. there, there we go. Now I can uh, finish sewing and finish off with a back stitch. So this is the little poofy right here. It's going to be... The gathering down here is looking quite nice, it's quite sort of quite even. And then the main gathering in the top is going to be between these points. So we've got a nice poofy thing going on up shoulder. But the observant among you will cry, Alex, how can you add a sleeve? when the original pattern does not feature one. So, I have a thing where I prefer to have either my arms uncovered and everything else kind of like higher, like a bit more modest, or the like sort of chest and back area uncovered and the arms sleeved. So either or, and um, rather than raising the neckline here and making my life terrible like that, I decided to add a sleeve on. Now, the tricky bit is that while the front kind of almost lends itself to be sleeved, the back doesn't really, like you've got this kind of very steep thing going on here so I played around a little bit I kind of like took a template of this part here and added it on to the strap in the, where it attaches at the back and ended up with this which is also why my strap looks a little bit different my strap pat pattern piece looks a bit different to the original um, ended up with this additional thing here and now you can almost kind of see a sleeve fitting in here which is this one so it fits in here quite nicely it sits quite nicely um, and it does its job rather perfectly because it's quite poofy and it doesn't sort of it doesn't interfere with the actual original pattern which is nice so I'm gonna show you how I set that in because why not so let's go So this is basically the exact same sleeve I used on the blouse I made in my last video. I'll put a card up to that. I just shortened the sleeve a little bit and also changed the gathering a tiny bit to be more centered on the outside of the cuff and more on top of the shoulder than spaced evenly around it. The rest is pretty much the same process. Also using about a million pins in here.
And here is the sleeve all set, nice and poofy. And after that ordeal, have a little kitty break. Okay, so next step is we have to join the front and back skirt pieces. This is the right side, so front and back, and the pocket facings, front and back, because, so let's do that. So, uh, we've now got the uh, front and back panels joined, and the pocket facings also joined and they now are going to be sewn in at the V up top there. So I've just sewn them to together with top stitch and then just zigzagged the edges for a seam finish and ironed the seam of the, back po uh, of the pocket facing forward and the seam of the skirt backward. So I'm going to pin that in and then I'm going to sew it. I'm going to show you how I do that because it's a little bit finicky in that very very tight corner down there so let's go Right, so I'm stitching down one side of the V to about half an inch from the point. Back stitching and then changing to the other side. Basically leaving the very tip of the point unsewn. I'll be top stitching over that in a moment and doing it this way was easier than trying to get the tip to line nicely after being sewn. I'm now pressing the face into the inside, having left the pins in the point of the V. This is going to help it sit nicely after I put in the top stitching. With the top stitching itself, it's actually easier to shimmy around the very tip of the V by hand turning the wheel. This doesn't give a sharp point, but it will stay on the seam allowance on the inside and thus catching the part that wasn't sewn earlier. It's not exactly my finest work, but if someone is this close to my pocket to take issue with my top stitching, there are definitely other things they should be worrying about. Okay, so after um, all the fuss with the skirt, pocket facings, now I've got to get the yoke sorted so that can sort of connect here and go in there. The only problem with that is that I have to put in the zip as well. <laughs> so conceal zip too, so that's going to be fun. So uh, let's get to it. Same trick as with the zip on the top earlier, sewing up to the marker, back stitching, and then switching the stitch length to basting. No idea why, why I'm complaining about this, it worked fine on the top.
And here I am again, adjusting my needle and sewing the zip, and again making a real hash of things with the moving of the zip itself. The zip movie thing. And here is the finished yoke, ready to be pinned to the facing. Now the way I'm doing it here is definitely a little weird, but I fiddled around pinning, unpinning, repinning, and then pinning again on the yoke for the other side of the, of the skirt because of the curve until I used the pillow, so this is what I'm going with. The sewing of the yoke is pretty straightforward, and even though it's on a curve, and I use a gajillion pins as usual, all the pins make the sewing so much longer, but I am terrified of, of hitting a pin with a needle, so I always take them out before, rather than sewing over them. Here's the yoke all sewn in, and now I need to baste together all the overlapping layers up at the waist. Pinning it all together as usual, and I'm sewing rather than basting just for stability later on. And from here on out, it's a breeze, really. Pinning the center front right sides together, sewing with a short top stitch, same with the back, and that's that. No seam finish needed, since I was a clever sausage and cut those parts on the selvage. Now with a waistband, I futzed around a bit before deciding to pin and sew it all in one go, so uh, here's a bit of pinning ASMR. And now, before the reveal, you can see that my camera assistant was uh, very distracted. It was a rather cold, rather windy day, and I wasn't wearing my glasses, so uh, do please excuse the uh, very strange facial expressions. All in all, I think this two-piece turned out quite nicely. Uh, I may or may not go back and redo the straps and sleeves because I set them a little further to the sides than I intended, but we'll see. I also haven't hemmed the skirt yet, purely because I can't decide on the length, but uh, all in good time. I had a heckin' ton of fun making this, so I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, it would be fantastic if you could give that like button a squeeze. And while you're down there and uh, decide you want to see more of my little adventures and you are not subscribed to me yet, do hit that subscribe button and feel free to share with your friends. That would be absolutely amazing. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go chill now, but I will see you in my next video. Wherever you are, have a lovely day. Bye.